start the show by the head coach of the Martinsburg Bulldogs baseball team, Aaron Byler. Following that, we'll talk NBA playoffs, hot take Tuesday, and finish the show with some Orioles and Nationals discussions as well. Coach Byler, how are you today? I'm doing well, guys. How are you? Doing well. I'm good. Doing great. So Always. I guess we'll... Yeah. Tom, go ahead. Show brought to you by Brown Funeral Home and Cremations, Robert Fields and Sons, family-owned full-service funeral home, probably serving our area back since 1880. Yeah. I guess we'll start with, uh, obviously, your team's playing for the state tournament, but to get there, you had to get through Jefferson and, and a great uh, regional championship final. Um, I guess just take us back through that series and what uh, those wins meant to you and the program and just, um, you know, what did you kind of take away from it? Yeah, I think when you look back at the series as a whole, it was just a, a great high school baseball series against uh, two quality programs. I think we talked before, you know, when I came here, Jefferson was kind of the standard. Um, and I think we've worked really, really hard to, to meet that standard and, and get our program to that uh, standard. So to be able to take two out of three from them and, and get to Charleston uh, for the second time in our tenure here is uh, it's a big step forward in the right direction. We know you guys were kind of favored in that regional as well, being the number one team in the region, number one team in the state. You get a close win in game one, game two, things kind of fell apart, but you were able to bounce back, take game three back at home. Just though, talk to us a little bit about game two, kind of just the reaction afterwards and what was said to get your team to be able to bounce back and not give up. Yeah, well, I think first you mentioned, you know, kind of being the favorite. I think anytime you're the favorite comes with a little bit of pressure. I think our kids felt that pressure a little bit, unfortunately, and then finally in game three, we got them to play a little bit, uh, you know, to win as opposed to not to lose. But, you know, in game two, it was a lot going on. You had the 12 12 o'clock start you had the kids you know we had nine we have nine seniors so we had nine kids that were graduating that night um so yeah but you know i told them after the game and, and i told them before game three i said if if i would have told any of you that we had a chance to go to charleston with one game away at this point at the beginning of the season every one of you would have taken it uh so we just need to kind of relax and, and do what we do and and you know they they came out and i told you in the post game interview i thought they played with a lot of grit uh in game three and and just really proud of them how they battled throughout that entire series and, and how they were able to bounce back after game two. And fortunately, the beauty of West Virginia baseball is that your sectional is a double elimination tournament and your regional is a best of three. And then you get to Charleston and it's a uh, it's one game, uh, one game series. Now, before we talk about that, obviously the job's not done yet, but what does it mean to you for the accomplishments that the team has gotten through so far to win the region and you know set the school record for most wins in a, in a regular season as well? Well, I think it's just a compliment to, to all the kids in our dugout. You know, we have 22 kids in the dugout, and obviously not all of them play, but they're all invested. They're all great young men, and we're just super proud of them. And and we t we had a checklist beginning of the year, and the first first check the first uh, thing that we tried to win to do was to to win the EPAC and we did that and then we tried to be the one seed in the sectional in the regional tournament we did that and then obviously you had to win the sectional uh, which was you know two very hot hard fought games against Hedgesville and then we were just kept tried to check boxes off every day and go one and oh every day and and they did a great job in that regional series and you know our goal right now is to go one and oh on Thursday and kind of check that box off and it's it's going to be no easy task and we and we know that we're very well well aware that you mentioned it being just one game um every you know level up to this point you you had multiple games to get the job done how does that change things from a coaching perspective and uh just for your team as well knowing that you have to have your a game in both these games uh, to win states yeah i mean i don't i don't think we can let that uh, affect us or, or play tight or nervous or or do anything like that. Yeah, it's one game, but I think we've pl we've played, you know, we're 33 and 3, so we've played 36 games to prepare us for that. And every single day, we've tried to win the day and win the game. Um, so that's got to be our mentality, and we just have to play like that. And we can't, we can't treat it, although it's a state semifinal game, we have to do our best just to treat it as another game. And, and we have to play with grit. You know, you have, we have 21 outs to get, and they have 21 
anyone else to get. So it's just we have to value every every pitch and every out and every at bat, and we just have to be really gritty and really competitive, and we can't let the f- the fear of failure and, and losing impact how we play the game of baseball. We just have to continue to do it the right way, uh, like I think we've done all year. You guys will be taking on George Washington uh, as you guys got the one seed, they get the four seed. What have you learned about their program this year so far in the uh, time that you've had to look into them? Well, I know their coach very well. I think they're they're a great program, and those guys do a, a great job. Uh, they they have the experience of being able to play there. They played their conference uh, semifinals there, uh, so I think they've played there at least once, if not twice. Uh, the Bryson Hoff kid on the mound is, is pretty darn good. He's committed to go to West Virginia. I think he averages about 11 or 12 strikeouts an outing. Uh, so that's going to be a tough task. But, you know, I think Carson Buber on our end is pretty darn good. Um, so, you know, Coach Sarnecki's done a great job of, of going through uh, um, all the YouTube games that we were able to watch and kind of breaking down their hitters. And, you know, we've kind of tried to prepare our kids for the Hoff kid. I mean, he's got a slider that's probably next level. So we've tried to prepare him for that. We, You know, we brought in a hack attack pitching machine that throws sliders at 81 uh, he's about 86 87 with the fastball and the sliders about 81 uh, so he's good I mean there's no secret there but I think our kids are good and and, I th- and then you know kind of my message to them is you know he's one kid and, and we have nine kids in the lineup that I think are very capable and we just have to have gritty at bats uh, we, just, we just can't have non-competitive at bats we have to make sure that every time we go to the plate we battle and compete um, I don't expect it to be a high scoring game I, you know somebody said to me, you know, you know, you're averaging almost 10 runs a game. You know, hopefully that translates well. I think as we found out in sectional and regional and playoff baseball as a whole, that it's, it's not easy and you're not going to score 10 runs. Um, so my biggest thing and, and what we've kind of talked about is just make sure that we have competitive bats throughout the game. Make sure we work. Try to get some runners on any way as possible. Make sure we move runners. Um, I fully expect it to come down to a, a situation here or there where maybe you get a walk and get a bunt down and get a base hit. Uh, I expect it to be a 2-1 to one or 3-2 to two ball game and, and every pitch is going to be magnified and we just have to make sure that we're in the moment and, and prepared for every pitch and when Whenever that opportunity comes our way, we have to make sure we make the most of it. What has gone into planning this trip down to Charleston? Because obviously, you know, it's not quite like the basketball tournament where you have you know a lot of other teams playing and it can go you know, three, four days or whatever it might be. But there's still that da- downtime. It's a long trip down. What have you been putting together for your team? Make sure that they they can stay focused on on this trip down. Yeah, there's a lot of logistics that go into it. Um, we're gonna we're gonna practice today. Uh, we're just gonna have a light practice. Uh, we're gonna pack all our stuff up. You know, we're gonna prepare to play two games. So you got to make sure you have all the uniform combinations and make sure you have all that. Uh, we're going to leave tomorrow at 8 o'clock. I think uh, uh, shortly here on our social media page, we're going to put out a, a, a link or a route that we're going to exit uh, town. So hopefully people will show up for that. Um, Morgantown, Coach Pat Sherrard uh, is a good friend of mine also, and, and he agreed to let us practice. So we're going to practice at Milan Park on our way down. Uh, we're going to check in the hotel, relax a little bit, go to team dinner. Uh, Wednesday morning, we can get up, feed them breakfast. Uh, Cap, thanks to Capitol High School, is going to let us uh, come hit at noon. Uh, so everybody's kind of been taking care of us and come back to the hotel, change, you know, talk to them a little bit and and be ready to go for 4.30. And, you know, we I refuse to look at any logistics past that. You know what I mean? Our, our focus is at 4.30. Obviously, our, our goal is to stay till Saturday. Uh, but we're not talking about any of that right now. We we have everything planned out to 4.30 on, on Thursday, and, and, and we're really excited about the opportunity. Opportunity. And, and I want to thank everybody in the, around the community that's pitched in and gave us donations to kind of help with that, um, with the fee of going down there. It's also not going to be easy. You know, we're we're traveling five and a half hours and George Washington is traveling eight minutes. Um, so I think I think we're definitely going to be at a disadvantage when it comes to fans. I know we'll, our fans will travel and I think we'll have good support, but it's almost like we're going to play an away game. So that, that'll obviously be a little challenging too. You mentioned you guys are obviously going to throw Carson there in Game One and, and against the you know DV, D1 pitcher from that's going to WVU, but uh, you know Carson may not have that D1 status. But what do you think makes him so good? I mean, his numbers 
can match up with anybody in the state, anybody probably in the country, 10 and 0 with 80 strikeouts and 64 and two thirds innings. Uh, it's it's pretty impressive stuff. Yeah, and I would hope that when the sports writers have their their meeting there on Thursday and they talk about Player of the Year, Carson's in that conversation because I think he should be. And and he might not have that Division One offer. Um, he has multiple. He has lots of interest around the state of D2 and junior colleges, and you know, hopefully, maybe you know, he throws really well on Thursday and gets that offer. But I think Carson's focused on the moment. I think Carson's a kid that's pitched in big games for us for three years now. I don't think the moment will be too big. He's the ultimate teammate and competitor. Uh, he wants nothing more from for his community and his teammates and his team uh, to 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 win that semifinal game. And and we're really confident in him. And and his biggest thing is just we can't let the moment be too big, you know. And that's kind of all our all our things. I think that first inning we have to make sure we're settled in. You know, they're high school kids. They'll be nervous. They'll be excited. Uh, but we just have to make sure that soon, the fastest, faster he can settle in on the mound, uh, the better for us. So hopefully it's it's from the first batter, uh, first batter on. But no, we have all the face in the world in Carson, and and we know he's going to compete and, and give us his best effort, and and that's all we can ask. Has uh, Lane helped you guys out at all since, you know, he has the experience of being down there for the state tournament? I mean, how, how has he tried to be kind of a leader for some of the guys yeah, that they've had? Any Lane's questions? an ulti- ultimate teammate and a great guy to have in the locker room and the dugout. And if we get to Saturday, Lane will start game. Lane will start the championship. But, yeah, he's kind of talked to the guys about going down there and the preparation. And and the, the biggest thing with this guy is I've used the, the term quiet, ar- quiet arrogance, and I, and I think they just have that. And, and I don't think they're intimidated. Uh, you know, going down there, I don't think they're intimidated at the face of the Hoff kid. I think they're up for the challenge and excited about it. Um, and, and that's a great attitude that, that they have. And, and I think that'll go a long way in, in making us successful. Going to quickly change direction to kind of go off uh, something that you touched on earlier, just thanking people for helping donate for travel and food costs during this trip coming up. And I know you guys originally had scheduled a uh, game against East Hardy that was supposed to take place yesterday, even though it was going to be free admission just for the fans to come out and support the team. There were also some supposed to be potential donations for your team during this time and obviously that has unfortunately fallen through with kind of water on the field yesterday and then today it being canceled so how can people still if they want to donate to help your guys as a travel expenses and this trip coming up for states yeah well I'll, I'll be at the field you know uh all afternoon we're gonna have practice if anybody wants to reach out to me 814-233-2271 is my phone number uh we we take any support we have uh you know hopefully we're there from from wednesday evening to saturday so you know it gets expensive to feed those kids and and we just appreciate all the support and and thank everybody for for following along this season and, and on our journey I know Dylan doesn't have it something, so I'll switch back and kind of let you talk a little bit about all the other seniors. I know we've talked about Carson and Lane, but there are nine seniors to this year's team, and we talk about leadership for your team, and I feel like it comes in many different ways from the nine when they need to step up and be that leader on or off the field. Yeah, I mean, they're, it's just, they're just a cur- tremendous group of young men uh they all accept their roles you know not of them not all of them play every day you know we've talked about some getting opportunity here and there and making the most of it um they're just bought in they have they have one goal i mean they their goal is to win the state championship we haven't really hit from that all year um and they've just done a great job of, of leading by example we have some quiet leaders we have some guys that are you know our, our hype guys and our, our vocal leaders but just just the whole way around they do a great job of of managing the team and and i tell them all the time hey, it's it's your team i'm just kind of here not to screw it up um and they've done a great job and i expect that their leadership will, will carry us through the next day i know there's a lot of anxiety and anxiety and anxiousness and it kind of you know we're leaving tomorrow morning it kind of feels like you got you know all the time and not enough time you know you, you think about all the things you have to do but yet you're just ready to leave and get out of here and get to thursday but there's a lot that needs to happen between now and then coach thank you for coming on hopefully you guys can win that state championship and we'll talk to you next week hey that sounds great guys once again thanks for your coverage all year long we really appreciate you and, and i'd love to talk to you next week